So every day I'm inspired by our tamariki, their whānau and our kayako, our children, families and teachers who are amazing and it's their story that I'm sharing with you today. So it's in their languages that I say, ki ora, ki orana, whakalofalahi atu, lele and talofalava. It's really good to be here. Now visitors to our school constantly comment on firstly Rob, our beautiful teeth that our children have and also the tranquil haven that just permeates our school. We're really peaceful, our kids are happy and settled, both within the classroom and also on the playground. Teacher's dream, isn't it? So we had really bad behavioural choices. The kids were niggly, they were aggressive, hyperactive, obesity was everywhere, huge problems. So we had to do something. We had the junk food coming into school. So we had to do something because if the children were bringing any food to school, it was the um, sugary drinks that may have been breakfast and lunch and um, the highly processed junk food was coming into school. So we wondered why we had aggressive children. We also had a tuck shop which was leased out and of course it was about financial profit over student wellbeing. Well if we're really about tamariki, we have to forget um, profit and we have to think about student well-being. So how did we change to become the school that we are today as a tranquil haven of learning? So it began with a really simple idea and we were this fizzy drink, soft drink capital of <laughs> wherever as Rob has already talked about. We were it. We were, you couldn't get any worse than what we were. It was Coke for breakfast. It was Mountain Dew with the 39 teaspoons of sugar for breakfast. Really bad stuff. So I thought, and of course, Board of Trustees, as you know, are made up of um, your local community, Māori and Pacifica, hello. I don't quite fit in, I'm a bit different. And I thought, well, I'll go along and just plant the seed with our board of trustees at the end of year board meeting. So in the November we met and I thought I'll just plant the seed because they're not going to get it first time around. They won't get it. Well, they did. When I explained the why we need to consider becoming water only, they got it and they said, just bring it in. And literally overnight we became water only. We started the new school year as a water only school. So our consultation with the teachers was, they were told that the board had decided that it was going to be a water-only school. And with our parents, I tell you, I spent a lot of time over a carefully scripted letter that was going out to introduce <coughs> us being a water-only school. And that's what the consultation was. They were told, basically, we have had, to date, one complaint. We found the water becoming water only so easy, we thought, well, why don't we just move to the food as well? Because for us, it goes hand in hand. There's no point just being water only if the kids are still consuming highly sugary, highly processed food. And we found the water so simple, we thought we can do this as well. So we did it the same way. It wasn't educating the parents directly, but it was actually educating um, parents through their children and children have huge influence because the food that we saw coming into school was so bad but actually our five-year-olds were educating their parents on what they could and what they couldn't buy at the supermarket. So we've got the little five-year-olds who, who are regulating what their parents buy and we think that's real success. Or there's the other story of Viliami. Now Vil Viliami, quite a big little boy, five-year-old, starts at school unpacking his lunchbox and you hear him, I told mum I'm not allowed to eat this, it's not healthy, he's mumbling, mumbling to himself. And well, it's probably over a decade now that unless we do something about the food and drink that our kids are eating, this will be the first generation that will not outlive their parents. That's a reality. You probably, if you're in a school, the food, how did we do it? How have we done the water? We would say just keep it really simple. We have literally changed one lunchbox at a time. We didn't have any healthy food at all. We didn't see any fruit. We didn't see any sandwiches. There wasn't any healthy food coming in at all. So one of the first things we did, and probably many schools do the same thing, we changed the rituals around food. Because in our school and in our cultures, rituals are very important. So what we did, um, 
a morning tea is at 11 o'clock every day. So we work from quarter to nine until 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock until 11.10, it's still curriculum time, and but the children eat. So what we do, all of the children go outside with their classroom teacher, and it was an opportunity for us to actually <coughs> model what healthy food looks like and to encourage kids to bring healthy food to school. So we thought, well, actually, if we make kids sit down, and there may not be any food, but it's encouraging them to bring food because they're not going to go and play. They're going to have to sit twice a day for 10 minutes. So all kids, for 10 minutes, twice a day, sit with their food. We have swum against the tide of popular opinion about, and you said it, Rob, about Māori and Pacific parents who um, people think they don't care for their kids. They're not good parents. Now, I'm not sure where it is on the Auckland motorway. I travel out to Altara. I'm not sure where the line is on the motorway, according to the media, where suddenly, you know, I'm a brilliant parent because of where I live, and I'm moving into territory where there are only bad parents. That is a myth that we need to change. It is not true. I see the very, very best of parenting in the 180 South School I work in. And yes, I also see some um, interesting cases as well. But I think in any decile area, it's the same story. Mm. We never acknowledged or gave out to those who didn't have. As I've already said, our job is to teach children to influence, influence change rather than to feed children. We don't feed our kids. We expect our parents to do that. Mm. And what we've done is we've just raised our expectations on parents. So when parents enrol their child, they want to be the best parents. How can they help their child at school? We say, if you can provide your children with a healthy breakfast, and we'll give examples like wheat bix without any sugar, two wheat bix without any sugar, um, eggs, toast. We go through the things that we think might be a good breakfast and are um, not too expensive. We also, along the way, acknowledge the parents and families who were helping themselves. So lots of, lots of positive praise, lots of pats on the back for our parents. It didn't come from a power base of I know best or we know best and you're just the silly parents. We didn't patronise, but we patted them on the back for everything that our parents did. We said, well done, we like that. We took lots of photos. The, we used the student voice. Students are amazing. Student voice, so student lead assemblies promoting the benefits of drinking water and eating healthy food. What is healthy food? We use student voice for the DJs, little snippets in the newsletters. We're always really positive and giving, giving examples and photos of what a healthy lunch looks like. The other thing in the early days, that we did and we still do, but now we send one out to every parent because 100% of our children every day have a beautiful homemade lunch or lunch provided by home. We send home the Kapai Award. In our community, certificates are a big deal. If you go into homes, there may not be a lot of um, a lot of embellishment, shall we say, but school certificates are prized. They're up on the wall. And this just keeps supporting that self-efficacy of parents that they're doing an awesome job. We started off just simply because of poor behaviour. Kids out of control. Poor attendance. These, over a decade later, are the benefits that we are seeing. We had Eero visit in 2014. And usually it's principals who weep with Eero, is that right, sometimes? Mm -hmm. It's not good, but we had Eero actually weeping. We had two members of the team actually weep because they were so blown away. They go into lots of schools with that tranquil haven of learning, as they kept saying, and also just the well-being policies and practices that we had in our school. And I guess the one that we've become most famous for is the food and healthy water because we've got the foundations right. When they were so impressed, they sent their national office out to um, find out how we did it. And their wish was that we would get into other schools and spread the good word as well because they could <coughs> see the benefits of going into lots of schools. And you get into Yendara School and there's just, as they said, it's just tranquil tranquil and we we put that down to obviously it's brilliant teachers as well 
but a lot of it has to do with that water-only healthy kai.